<laughs> Part 5 of Return of the Phantom. We're about ready to go check out Box 5, see if we can uncover more mysteries of the Phantom. Are we gonna get any answers? I... <laughs> Uh, you're gonna see that the plot kind of starts kicking up oh. a bit here. So let's go right to it. Alright. Let's do it. <laughs> so again, box five is a pretty important part of the book. As you can see, we've got the best oh, view no. of the stage here, you so you can see why the Phantom wanted this box over all the others. Yeah. Also, he's writing us little love notes. My dear Vicomte, <laughs> leave Miss Day alone or you will suffer That's a great malice. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's sort of hard to do a Phantom voice because, I don't know, it's, it's hard to match. What his what he would look like to what he would sound like. Yeah, that's true. So Madame Giri told us to look to the structure of the opera. Oh. And if we look, it appears one of these columns is hollow with a keyhole that no one noticed. That's stupid. Yeah. Boop. All right. Where are we gonna find that key? Well, <laughs> we're gonna see. But first, we uh we we have to go talk to uh Christine for a bit. Okay. Hmm. Um, I really like that he just knew that, uh, um, Raul would, uh, go in and look in there, yeah. so he left either that or he just left notes in a bunch of strategic places. Presume, I, maybe he, like, overheard us talking to Madame Giri, and he was like, oh shit, he already got all of the frames, he's totally gonna go in there, I just gotta write a quick note here. Where the fuck are these frames? Also, he's from the future? What? What? Yeah. I... I, uh, again, I don't know how this whole future crap works. It's stupid. I feel like you could chop off the first, uh, the first, like, 30 or so minutes of the game and just start. Uh, considering this isn't the first time we've seen this story, uh, used in conjunction with time travel? Yeah. Is it just something? <laughs> is it point. like peanut butter and jelly? In the, uh, Genghis is alluding to the Robert Englund Phantom of the Opera version. I'm not gonna shut up about how much I love that, by the by. Which also features a time traveling, uh, character. It sure does. It's- I don't know what it is. Maybe the game took inspiration. Maybe we can only... Uh, we we can only feel for Raoul if we know that he's a real 1993 man going back in time. Well, yeah. I mean, people from uh, 1881 are just, like, you can't empathize with them at all. Yeah, they're, like, so old. Come yeah, on. jeez. Jeez, Grandma. So, oh. we can hear Christine singing. So, presumably, she's back from her errands. Singing about the groceries. I <laughs> pulls oranges. It's pretty great because yeah, the, so the Phantom uh, he uses the money that he gets from the managers to go shopping, and he is described as bringing things back for Christine, to the point where Christine at one she describes the dinner that she had with the Phantom. Oh, which a chicken wing. What? Uh, or chicken breast. It's, oh. it's just like... I was gonna say, a singular <laughs> chicken wing, that's uh... <laughs> yeah, it's a little grisly chicken wing. I know times <laughs> were tough, but uh, uh, that's yeah. uh... Ooh. But it's just kind of a, I don't know, sometimes Gaston Leroux goes into detail about stuff that I just sort of feel like isn't necessary. Mm. Um, but I don't know, it just it kind of makes me laugh, because the, the Phantom... To do the shopping, I should explain, he does have a fake nose that he wears. Okay. Because the Phantom is literally kind of a living uh, corpse. He His formity is described as uh, he's extremely thin, with sickly skin stretched tight over his bones. Uh, at one point, his skin is also described as being maybe slightly jaundiced. Mm. His nose is basically non-existent, um, resembling the kind of shape of a skull with that... The, kind of elongated nostrils. Okay. He's said to have yellow eyes like a cat that are only really visible in the dark. In the light, um, apparently you're not really able to see his eyes that well. You just see the dark, empty sockets. Oh, gross. Mm -hmm. No wonder uh, Christine was horrified. Yeah. 
Oh, wow. Yeah, so Christine Daae is a dead ringer for Christine Florent. Who knew? And what's sort of weird here, so Christine Florent had this portrait in her uh, dressing room, which is a Degas original. But Degas was bemoaning the fact that he Bonjour, wasn't appreciated Christine. in his time, so shouldn't no. that painting not I just be there? From my errands, also, I don't call him being have. particularly Why underappreciated in his own time. Or? Uh, I mean, mm. the art was fairly controversial because it was Impressionism. Oh, well, nobody liked that shit at the time, but... Yeah. Why, Raul? Eh, who knows? We knew each other. So as I briefly touched you know upon that. here, Raul and Christine we were childhood friends. Here, here uh, Christine opera. describes the story so that's from the book where so she and her father were walking career. along a beach. Her scarf flew off into the ocean and Raul, who just happened to be nearby, ran Xbox into the uh, the water to go reclaim her scarf for her. Don't oh, that's remember? nice. Mm -hmm. You jumped into the ocean to retrieve a scarf I had dropped. Deja vu. The wind that carried it into the sea. <laughs> you ran into the water with your clothes on. Yeah, so after that father. first meeting, you they kind of just grew up together a bit with uh, Raoul sort of enjoying the stories that Christine's father uh, told he them. Me so much about One of them being the, the story about the stories. angel of music. You used to listen to uh, him too. Basically, uh, Daddy Dai kind of knew he was dying. Um, and sort of as a comfort to Christine, he would tell her stories about the Angel of Music, who was this this angel who would appear to the great musicians of the world. Uh, Daddy Daae told Christine that when he went to heaven, he would send to her the Angel of Music. And then it was Eric. Well, uh, essentially, cr this, but this you know, basically explains Christine's day. blind devotion to the whole angel of music slash phantom. Mm -hmm. um, she's sort of desperately clinging to this sign of the uh, Tell me more of her father, the angel of music. Uh, and so because I think to a lesser extent, to the idea that she's a great teacher. singer, because Daddy Dai, part of his story was that the angel of music only appears to the greatest help. singers. So I think it's sort of twofold but who there. Basically, what seems to have happened to is that Christine but he really is just an angel. somehow got the attention of the Phantom at the opera, die, uh, and he starts he singing to her to uh, through the walls. Oh. So she just hears this voice voice. singing to her, and eventually, look like? after not being able to find where it's coming from, she starts speaking to the voice it. and finds that I it responds to her. He oh. sings and speaks to me here. Eventually, this one day, this she kind of just goes, are you the angel of music? And he goes... Yes. Oh, sure, why yeah. not? Yeah, yeah. yeah. sure. Yeah. Sweet deal. Crazy bitch. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that kind of is what kickstarts it. Um, there's a scene at, in the novel uh, where Christine visits her father's grave and she meets Raoul there. Um, that's sort of where Christine explains to Raoul that the angel of music is her is teaching her lessons, and that's why there was you heard the strange man's voice in my in my dressing room. Oh. I wouldn't imagine he'd be very comforted by that, though. No, he was not, and he flats out tell her tells her that he thinks that somebody's kind of pulling her leg. Yeah. Tell me about your dream. Oh, you're not cheating on me. You're just mentally disturbed. <laughs> So Christine here is uh, kind of describing like a dream, music. which includes a white horse. A white horse um, is horse. that purity? Well, this is actually another reference to the novel. Um, well, we make love. And here I'm flipping out about the make love thing again. <laughs> but uh, while Christine went to meet uh, Raoul at her father's grave, a horse is stolen from the opera. Um, this is presumably the so. phantom stealing the horse so that he can go join Christine at the graveyard. He promised her that he, as the angel of music, would play for her using her father's fiddle, which was Sounds buried romantic. with her father. Oh, jeez. Why, um, you sound jealous. The phantom it's seems to keep the horse because it does show up later, uh, in his lair. He uses it to ferry Christine to, uh, to his house on the lake. Come here. Okay. So it is kind of just Come a weird little me. brief thing that they specifically point out the horse, whose name is Caesar, by the way. Oh. Uh. Mm -hmm. But. Are you sure you're all right? No. At this I point, um, in the story, I again, Christine know. believes that the Phantom is forget. actually an angel. We right. should see what happens. So, um. If I'm accepted as a lead. You're a little I weird. <laughs> You're a little weird. And yeah. I would lose you forever? I'm mildly disturbed. Don't worry about that. 
But uh, as you can imagine, there comes a point where Christine... No. Uh, the Phantom is revealed no, to Christine be as being a real flesh and blood now dude, oh. and it completely really... dispels the whole notion of uh, oh. being the, the Phantom, or here. sorry, being the I'm Angel of Music. Because obviously, an angel wouldn't roll? be a flesh and blood you guy. No, mm -hmm. he wouldn't look like a corpse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <No>. Well, <laughs> presumably, yeah. Coming from? <gasps> so yes, yeah, so we can hear the Angel of Music beckoning Please, Christine. I cannot speak anymore. Please. I was gonna shuffle away. Mm -hmm. Man, your posture's terrible, Christine. She's just kind of staring off into a corner, apparently. Go away, Raul. Please. <laughs> Leave, Leave <me> bitch. <laughs> Get out of there. Yeah. Gotta talk to my my honey pie. Mm. Oh, fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> no, you wouldn't call the angel of music your honey pie. Yeah, that's more mm. of a darling situation. Yeah. Huh. But we can hear a strange male with this smooth, almost hypnotic Angel voice. Is that you? Are you here? <laughs> yes, Christine. <laughs> oh, Christine. <laughs> no, come on. Come to me, she's my just God. really, like, she just really is desperate for yes, an angel to come, sent by coming. her father. Come oh, on. Hey, All right, fair enough. Come on. Putting it that way, I feel kind of bad. Yeah. Come to me. And you as it's sort of suggested, the Phantom does seem to have some sort of hypnotic forever. abilities. This is presumably another thing that he learned while in the, the uh, traveling the door, freak show. Oh. At one point, even Raoul is sort of transfixed forever. by the Phantom's and voice. Mm -hmm. I must Come get to inside. me, angel of music. <laughs> yes, exactly. Why don't you just kick the door down? No, we're doing oh. this with style. Wait, that fire axe was there for a hundred years. hundred years. Nobody except we used it here, so presumably they replace it. Look, we that was a thin-ass door. Yeah, we no, broke, that was made out of balsa. Notice that we broke the axe, too. <laughs> oh, but Christine has vanished. She's probably hiding under the couch because you broke into her <laughs> room with an axe. She's just in the wardrobe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So as the, the game is suggesting, there is a trick with the mirror. Um, oh. We do not discover it in this game, sadly. We find a much lamer way to the Phantom's Lair. Oh, hmm. that's and, that's unfortunate. Where could she be? Doesn't she know she must go on in less than Okay, that's a minutes? shitty plan, Phantom. What could have happened to her? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Christine's got to sing. Just kidding. Ah, I screwed your opera over. I, well, he, he, he wanted to... Get well, get sake. the smoochies in before well, you wish her good luck. You know, break a leg before the big show. <laughs> oh, but who's this? Are you all right? Yeah. You've got a new coat? No, oh, she just. Has, I think it's a shawl. Oh. Maybe she Where just went been? shawl shopping. So Maybe she was just hiding in the wardrobe. The yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry, some guy broke into my room with I an axe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I am a professional. Raoul. I have left mm. for you a complimentary box seat ticket at the box office. Please, pick hint, it up. Hint? I must run to my dressing room now. Adieu. Adieu. But given that the Phantom can apparently hear any whispers, uh, you kind of do need to take such measures to well, sneaky sneak a little wife. note to somebody. I must, yeah. I must say it's a good thing we repaired her dressing maybe, room. Uh, maybe you should just speak everything in Pig Latin. You break the door. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, that'd be the- Well, who's this Christine K? <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't even yes. know Christine K? That's not Pig Latin. How do you do it again? It's been so long. I'm not, I'm not, like, four anymore. <laughs> How would you do it, Christine? It's like the first, like, syllable and you'd, like, add it A on the end or something like that. You okay? So you would not, you would not be able to it's do. It's Dean Cray. That would there be we... it. It's Dean Cray. <laughs> I just think about that. It's not a skill I use often. I, maybe the Phantom probably he's a genius, so he probably knows Pig Latin. Oh damn it! This man's <laughs> clearly unstoppable. Yeah, but so we are going to just go quickly pick up our ticket. And uh, <laughs> I kind of like this area because, as you can see, we cannot exit the opera. Yeah, there's no door. It's just, we're just completely That's a ticket? I, I thought that was a painting. Oh, no, no, it's a, yeah, it's a ticket window. <laughs> it's a bit, uh, I, it's a sort of a weird game in that it's essentially yeah, a, uh, have you heard the term too. bottle movie before? Yeah. It's a what bottle game. Yeah. 
where we're just spending time in one location, which I don't mind too much because at least it's got variety to it. But it does sort of mean that it's a very condensed game. Um, the it, the events of the entire game just kind of take place over the course of a couple hours. Yeah. So we don't have any money. Well, why don't we just say that they're complimentary yeah, goddamn tickets? Well, that's the thing. That's the puzzle, but... That's not a puzzle. Just, that's just being no, dumb. No, it's, it's... Come on. No. It, it's, I'm showing off all the options. Did you have a ticket for Raul? To oh, show you have to do it that way. Yeah. yeah. Dance yeah. to my to my it's music, just a helpless <laughs> gamer. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I don't... I, don't uh, I have a distaste when games do that. Yeah. Yeah. Throw it in the garbage. So we're just gonna pop open the letter here as I struggle <laughs> with the inventory system Opening a little bit. Opening things is so difficult. Every other note Even has been Angel. automatic, save for Please this one. Please meet me backstage after the performance oh. tonight. Hmm. Meet me backstage. Um, and let's just hope that the Phantom isn't there as well? Is this it? It's Question kind of, mark? Yeah. Maybe you should leave the opera house? <laughs> to be fair, their plan in the novel wasn't that great either. Okay, fair they, enough. They basically were just... Uh, it's, I guess it's sort of the same thing. They're like, let's get out of here, but not until I do my performance. That part's important. Mm-hmm. And, and, and Raoul even kind of at one point, he's like, why didn't I just convince her to leave early? <laughs> I'm so stupid! Yeah, because, I mean, as you're going to see, it goes a little awry. Hmm... But we were given a, a ticket to one of the box seats, so let's say hello to Madame Giri. Hey, well, hey. things are a bit screwy. Can you use your psychic abilities to tell me the Excuse winning me, lottery Monsieur? tickets for tonight? Do you have a ticket? Yes. <laughs> Very good, Monsieur. Box nine. I shall unlock the door. Damn it, I wanted box five. Mm hmm. So where are boxes one, two, three, and four? Presumably, kind of around the corner, maybe on oh, the other I side. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of. I, they're all really Enjoy tight together. I don't Monsieur. think this screen is really indicative of where the actual placement would be. I would assume so, because otherwise there'd be no way really no one would see little... the phantom. Yeah. We're not gonna redraw a different box angle, so you just get to sit here. <laughs> Pretend this isn't box five. <laughs> wow. There still must be a giant on that stage. Okay. <laughs> I'm the only person in this opera. Hmm. Yeah, what great music this game has, eh? Oh yeah, for a game that's all about music. Hmm. Talented singers. Oh no! Ah! <laughs> he looks surprised! <laughs> oh shit! Uh, uh, magic! Oh, who knew? Mm hmm. So. One hour later. Sucks to be everybody at the opera that night, because apparently Christine well, was just whisked away in the first clear. minute of the, the performance. Uh, no refunds! No, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> runs out on stage. No refunds! <laughs> Yes. Has backstage been thoroughly searched? So we okay, flash forward to an hour later, presumably Stage so we don't have to deal with to the question of yourself. what happened to all the other uh, opera they goers. Went through yeah. the trap door. Yes, it was no magic trick. I I'm surprised though it had the restraint to do that. You think they would have made us question well, every single person? Oh god, <laughs> just everybody in the Perhaps lineup. You yep. <laughs> Alright. What should I do now, Monsieur Richard? Oh fucking no. He just told us, Raoul. Life. That monster is capable of anything. We must find her. So Christine disappearing off stage happens in uh, the middle of the book. Um, kind of as sort of briefly touched upon. Uh, Raoul and Christine make plans to try and flee, but Christine insists on doing one last performance, sort of as a credit to the Phantom, uh, so that he can kind of hear her sing, uh, in what should be her greatest triumph. Um. So at once she disappears off stage, that kind of marks the point where Raoul sort of becomes a useless character, and the hero becomes the Persian. Ah. Um, basically, Raoul is just outmatched by the Phantom. He doesn't know him, he doesn't know his tricks, he doesn't know where he lives. So again, if not for the Persian, um, 
Right. Al would just be unable to fight Christine. <laughs> well, that's that, I guess. In fact, at one point, um, the police uh, commissioner tells Raul that he's like, hey, so your brother is missing. I think he just ran off with uh, Christine. And Raul is about to leave the opera, convinced that his brother made off with his bride-to-be when the Persian stops him. Oh. But enough about that. We're gonna go talk to Jacques. Ooh. And, uh, oh. Oh my god! Yeah. Who would have foreseen this? Uh, yeah, I don't know. This character I cared so much about. And his neck has been broken. Oh. So this what is... What the hell is this music? It's like I... four don't ducks. Don't worry, it's gone now. So, uh, Jacques is possibly a reference to jo Joseph Bouquet, who was the first victim of the phantoms that we see in the book. Oh. Uh, like Jacques, he died by the Phantom's Punjab Lasso, uh, but not in the manner you might expect. We'll kind of be touching upon that at a later point. <gasps> we have the key now. Yeah, apparently Jacques just had this key to every door in the opera, including, including... the Phantom's <laughs> secret spooky door. You're right, that... that is way stupider. That or, I don't know if maybe it's meant that the Phantom dropped the key while he was killing I feel like that's maybe more the indication they're going towards. There is mention of skeleton keys in the novel. Um, the new managers, when they took the position, they were given the skeleton keys and they were being passed around and people were kind of ooing and aahing them. Mm -hmm. And um, I, it sort of suggested that perhaps the opera ghost was in the crowd and maybe he could have potentially got one of the skeleton keys. Maybe oh. this is how he was able to get into some of these places that he made a mold of the key while it was being uh, passed around. Um, that's sort of mostly my own interpretation. Okay. But so, uh, again, the Persian was pretty integral to Raoul being able to go track down the phantom. Um, as I kind of mentioned, they were able to go through a secret passage uh, hidden behind Christine's mirror. Wait, did, is he gonna get someone to deal with, with Jacques? No. Oh. Um, <laughs> this is kind of, I don't like how we are given this key, and this is how we get into the Phantom Slayer. It seems just really dumb. I kind of wish that there was some sort of puzzle with the mirror instead. Mm-hmm. But that's it for uh, part five. On to part six, where we go down into the depths of the catacombs of the Paris Opera House. Womp womp womp. <laughs>